Hello, hello, hello. It is Emma Holmes at Coaching Rockstars and I am joined today by the very beautiful Vicky Nicholson. Hello, my darling. Morning. How are you? I am very well this fine morning. <laughs> good, good. I am just going to give it a couple of minutes and let people... Oh, sorry. I'm very well. Oh, that was me. You're checking in on us. You're I checking the that we're live and we're streaming. I'm chicken. <laughs> so come on in, come and say hello in the comments box if you are joining us live. If you're watching the replay, you are equally as welcome and you can pop any comments or questions that you have into the comments box and we will come back and have a look at them. Morning, Emma Morning. Johnson. Hi, hi. So today we're going to have a little bit of a chat generally about branding, about brands, about what branding is all about. Hi Trudy! And just really sort of exploring the the visuality, I suppose, of your business. Oh. That <laughs> visuality. That's a word of the day. We'll have to use that. Is it a word? That's a good we'll make up stuff today. Let's do that. Yeah, we we did good at that. Yeah. So, would you just like to explain a tiny smidge about what a brand is? What what is it all about? Because we use the word a lot, and I don't think we really understand what it means. Right. Well, um, essentially, branding, and I think it's just a fancy word for basically being yourself. That's what I believe it truly is. It's all about being you. It's all about your personality, how you shine through and being you and your brand and then how we visually style that out to recognition. But I'm like, yeah, yeah, good word. <laughs> <laughs> uh, then how we visually style that out to represent who we are. So it's just a pure reflection of who you are. So who you are and what you say and what you do and what you believe and how you talk and your voice and then styling that out online. Mm -hmm big wide world whether you are on or offline makes no difference it's all marketing it's all visual styling to represent who you are and that is just a pure reflection of you that's what I believe it is anyway it's I think it's a word that women get stuck on quite a lot though people do get stuck on that quite a bit because they think it's the bit it's not for them and it's what the big boys do and it's not yeah I think that because we, we look at brands as mm. being the likes of coca-cola and the big players out there yeah. And we go, oh, well, I just need a logo. Yeah. Tell me about just needing a logo. Well, the thing is, a lot of people say, oh, I just need a logo and that's it. But it's not because the thing is, once you start with your logo, it's about then where you place it. Because what do you put it on then? Do you put it on your memes? Do you then reflect that in your content? What is it that you're actually saying within your logo if your logo has a tagline? So, like, I know that you're a massive believer, and we did this exercise with you when we went on the Invincible Media about how you actually say what you do rather than giving yourself a label. And um, so, I talk about radiating your passion, um, you know, shine online, getting yourself out there, being unique, standing out from the crowd. You know, it's about contrast. And those are the things that your tagline will probably say about you. But then it's about where you put that out there. So your visual content, your textual content, all equal. If you think of it like a little pyramid, they're all the same thing. It's like your, it's like the basics of everything. It's like a building block and it all piles on top of one another. So your logo is one part of a very small part of your brand. But it's really important about your colours and your fonts and your style and your imagery and everything else that you do. Yeah, it's total styling, isn't it? It's, mm. I suppose, you know, I often talk about as you build your business that we kind of go through um, different stages. We start off as, as these these babies and toddlers and we want to do it all by ourselves and, you know, it's all, I can do this, I can do this, I can do this. And then we get into this kind of teenage, uncomfortable kind of stage where we're trying to find ourselves. Yes. Do you find that, that brands evolve that you work with a lot like that? Or do you, you know, not including me because I'm... I'm <laughs> I was about to say, are you talking about yourself, Emma? <laughs> mm. A lot of people find their feet within their brand. Mm. They grow into it. Is Absolutely. it like we 
by oh. so they went to school that's like this far down past the hands and got yeah. the size of growing to it? Or do people go with something and then evolve from it generally? I find actually that whenever you start out in business anyway, this is a general rule, regardless of being in business, I think business is very organic in nature because I actually think that what happens with a lot of my women, there's Debbie, just come on, right? Debbie and I are working together just now. Um, she I is absolutely this morning. Very classy, very classy. But the thing with Debbie is, and she's a great example of that, I hope she doesn't mind me using her, but she's had this great idea. She's very inspired about her business and she knows what she wants to do. She knows who she wants to serve and she truly believes in her mission and her vision. And I am 100% backing her on that. She is an incredible woman. However, our brand is now evolving. Since she decided what she wants to do, we've actually come to the conclusion that what she wanted to call her business before is actually more like the growth of maybe some of our products and services and things that she's going to offer coaching but she needs to be the brand so that's grown with time it's not absolutely perfect from the get-go what I find is most of the, the people that I work with as well they grow into their brand it takes on an evolution of its own your products and services will change you might want to drop the label that you gave yourself beforehand so you might just want to call yourself your name things change as you go on that is never set in stone. And you are another prime example of that. You know, we've changed things, you know, here and there. We've tweaked things till we get it right. You know, it's about finding your feet and everything that you do. And I think that business is really organic. And that, like I said, it's for everything. Mm -hmm. You know, we've worked together for a year and I did a blog recently about brand evolution mm -hmm. and the reasons why I moved from one stage to another just to sort of really look at, at how this happens and, and where the growth comes from and it most of it comes from your personal evolution within your business and probably an element of your confidence would you say 100 percent. that is definitely true because the, the more that you do the more people that you serve the more inspiration you get then you you will evolve 100 percent. yeah yeah when you first start out how important is it to get a grip on the brand thing because lots of people get really stuck at the beginning mm -hmm. with uh, i need a, i need a logo they probably don't even think brand i need a website i need a this i need a that i need a the other so from the visual aspect how much is it absolutely essential to go out there and just start fading your way where do we go in that spectrum a lot of people don't even start off with a logo a lot of people just get started um and to be honest with you a lot of people for the logo type stuff that comes after and they fumble through stuff and yeah. they learn online programs like canva and pick monkey um possibly using a bit of word and they're using every free tool on the market they can get their hands off. Some of people really struggle because they actually don't know what is out there. So they fumble through to start with. And it's the fumbling and the DIY part of it that actually makes a massive difference to people because they know that once they start growing that they've not got time to concentrate on that anymore and they want good to go templates that are set in place that they can pull together stuff really fast so they'll hire a graphic designer or they will go ahead and they know all the tips and tricks that they've learned and they'll go away and brand themselves effectively. Mm -hmm. So it just depends. There's two ways that things can go, really. Mm -hmm. So do you find that lots of people that ultimately work with you um, for you to help style out their brand, are they tending to be people who've been in business for a little while? Or do you have a real good mix between newbies and people who are well established no I get people who have already been established they're already established they already know what they're doing their message has changed down the line yeah. they've been DIYing themselves they don't have time for that anymore and yeah. they want somebody who's going to professionally brand them because this is about pulling your stuff together fast because they don't have the time to do that or give it to the VA so that they can then pull all the stuff together for them so yeah. like I set templates up for people so that they can hit the ground running with their brand. But what I do do is have a bit of a training session with them 
you know, yes. give them all the tools that they need and brand guidelines and, you know, a good little Bible of like words and inspiration and colour and give them all their hex codes. And, you know, for some people, you'll be very surprised. A lot of people are really well educated within the online market because this surprised me when I first started out. I thought it was just graphic designers who knew what they were doing. But I had never even heard of Canva. Like, <laughs> I never heard of it because I never even liked it for you. <laughs> and, and no, and the thing is, I have to teach myself sometimes how to use these online platforms because it doesn't come second nature to me. But I do use, you know, all the sort of Adobe type software. So it just depends. But people are really well educated these days. They go out and they find out and they learn. Yeah, absolutely. They, they sign up for courses and they want to know how to do stuff themselves. So they are they're very intuitive. I think as well, it gives you a lot of power um, and. A, I think that confidence of, of being able to do it yourself means that you don't get stuck in that place where you're forever waiting for mm. other people to do stuff for you as well. It's quite empowering yes. to have that du the duality of, of you being able to do stuff for me, but also, you know, if back against the wall and I need to do something quickly, I can do an okay job. Yeah. I'm not as bad as I used to be. I think you're really good, actually. I think, a lot of people, I think there are lots of people out there, though, that once they've got the tools and they know what to do, that's the problem is that it's just they don't know what to do from the start. So then that's the part, is the next part, is actually getting it all, you know, sounded out. So having a board and making sure that you stay on brand, that making sure you know your fonts and you can use Canva to its best ability to do that. Or you can use PowerPoint. I bang on about PowerPoint a lot, but PowerPoint is really powerful. And these are the things that you can use all the time in order to throw your brand quickly together. It's dead mm -hmm. easy. So do you think, you know, what's the importance of colour in the mix here? Colour for me, um, see, this is the thing. A lot of people go on about, um, like, they want it, their brand to pop and they want it to stand out. You know, the biggest secret in the whole world about colour is that it's about contrast. It's about how you make the contrast you know so is it black on white is it pink on yellow is it blue on yellow i mean look at your colors for instance we use a lot of black now you know so we make your three core colors stand out to be honest with you color is more than that because yes first it's about contrast it's about creating feeling and it's about creating inspired action it's about creating emotion people connecting with it it's about choosing the correct imagery with the, all your colors on it that you know fits you know side to side and it's got great scope for you add your own quotes on it so it's about everything color is like from start to finish your actual brand because it's your colors that will build everybody's you know your own sorry your own personality within that and that's how you can distinguish between everybody's singular brand. But look at us, we both use pink. Mm -hmm. We use a pink that is much more reflectant of our personal personalities. Mm -hmm. But it's it's still pink. Yeah. You know, I use quite an in-your-face kind of bright pink and you use a much more um, <clears throat> feminine, pretty tone. Mm -hmm. Which therein lies the difference between me and you. <laughs> <laughs> The thing is, that's the whole point of being different, isn't it? Because I speak to people and they go, I know your memes whenever they stand out, or I know her stuff. Yesterday was actually uh, very interesting. There was somebody who ran a little competition in one of the groups and said, whose is this brand? I knew that person's brand. I didn't comment, but I knew exactly who that person's brand was because mm -hmm. it was so distinctive in yeah. her field. And it was her from the get-go. And you just knew it was. And that is why your colours and your imagery and your use of your fonts and using that over and over and over again is what gets inside the minds of people and your buyers and your customers. And where does the font come into it? What was that, sorry? Font. Your font. fonts. Are, fonts are amazing. <laughs> I'm like a big font geek. <laughs> fonts are like the best thing in the world for creating personality, life, character. If you're wanting contemporary slick fonts and you are a contemporary slick business, so you think about the emotion that a solicitor's um, you connect with on that basis, if they specialise in, say it's like criminal law, you know, it's a very serious, bold typeface that they want. 
If it is a dog walker, you might want one that's a bit of a squiggly end, so it looks like or it represents the end of the tail. If you are a horticultural, you might want something that is quite refined because obviously you know these things are if you think of like the most exquisite gardens that you get you know it's all to do with perfection and alignment and symmetry Mm. Uh, so these are all the things fonts have an incredible way of injecting your personality into your brand they are amazing at doing that in fact and sometimes sorry what were you going to say babes I was going to say that I think that sometimes I it's one of the things that I find that people lose their way with the most because they've got a Canva yeah. or Pick Monkey and there's a gazillion fonts to choose from and they have to go with what mood they're in on that day. It mm. seems to be one thing that does change radically for lots of people and they don't really define down their fonts rather than they know what the logo is, they pick the colour out the logo, everything's dandy. But font seems to be the one that people chop and change with yeah and that's the thing that you can't really do because and you can if you want to right and that's up to you however you run your business but the general guidelines or um as such are you know stick to two fonts max three at very most in your logo let's not go over the mark two We're down to two, Emma. We're down to two. Um, and uh, then choose complementary fonts. So your logo is like your standalone entity. Think of it as like its little own business. This is your logo up here. And then all the other fonts that you choose to go with that are like a little complementary, you know, the, the extra zing that add life and style to your logo. Side orders. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And that's that's exactly what it's like. And to be honest with you, you can use those fonts over and over and over again. So like when I look at the work that I do with women in business, I look at the fonts that they're going to use on the website. So yesterday I sat with the client and what we did was we worked together picking fonts that actually she really loves and that she feel like she was attracted to. And then I made suggestions based on, right, well, if you really like this one, we can use that for headlines. We can use that for headlines on your website. You can use that for headlines on your eBooks. You can also use that on your memes. You can use that on your social media banners and you can use that on your webinar template as well. And if you look at the free stuff that's out there, there is copious amounts of free stuff out there that you can use. And you get font families. If you get a font family that's got 18 fonts in it, yeah, you're laughing. That is the, that's the best yeah. thing. My Festivo's got a lot of fonts in that font family. I think there's like 12 in it or something. So you have the scope then to change every single letter. So if you look at your front of your book, which I haven't received my copy yet, um, if you look at that, so there are like maybe five or six, seven fonts in that. I've used each individual letter. If you have a font family, you have the, the scope to do that. It's great because it all looks the same. It looks consistent. We use your one of those fonts um, within your name and your actual logo. And then we use those fonts on um, things like graphics on your shop yeah. and your website. And then we use... I think the interesting thing is, is that, you know, an awful lot of the time. Oh, you're back. Where did you go? Oh, you're back, you're back. <laughs> one, of, you know, one of my big bugbears is pretty memes that I can't read the pig in writing on without getting my glasses out. Yeah, so it has to be bold. It has to stand out and it has to have contrast. And these are the things that a lot of people don't follow. Whereas that, if you look at that, that is sheer, that is an absolute prime example of contrast. If you this use font, all the colour of black. This font here doesn't work very well in smaller letters. This no, it needs to be big. Yeah. So I can't use that on a meme if it's going to be tiny writing. Tiny. So you've got, you know, you've got to start to get that feel mm-hmm. for the fact that lots of us are consuming on this. Yeah. Sorry, I've got horrible stickers all over the back of my phone that says, I love you so much, mummy, and a shopkin. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but you know that's the size that we're seeing your imagery in mm-hmm. so be careful that we can read it i know and that's the thing people you know think about your scroll factor think about whenever you're popping you want people to be able to read stuff fast that's why i don't use any images pretty much on any of my memes that i have because i just like to get message out fast yeah. and 
I like to use complete contrast, so I use black and white. Mm -hmm. It's really yeah. easy. Ping. 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 That's it, yep. So if you are looking to start to bring a little bit of order to your branding, mm -hmm. if you have somebody in front of you who is, best word, winging it, where would you start? The first place is to start is to think about what you actually need in your business. Mm -hmm. Because a lot of people think that they need everything and they actually don't. Mm -hmm. So if you're doing, so when you talk about like, winging graphics if they if they're on like several social media platforms then everything's pulled together really quickly because they think my gosh i've got to post everywhere all the time and i think that is probably more when you talk about winging it i think that's the the part of it more than anything else i think people try to do too much yeah so if you concentrate solely on a couple of social media platforms that's whenever i think the magic really happens because you can then pull together stuff really quickly, designed just specifically for those platforms. Yeah, totally, totally. That is probably the, the crux of whenever you're winging it and things don't seem to be happening, it's because you're doing too much. Yeah, one step at a time. Just mm -hmm. pull back and take it one step at a time. Absolutely, yeah. When you work with people, how much involvement do they tend to have with you? I know that I just go make something beautiful, but mm -hmm. I think I'm the exception to the rule. Very much so, yeah, because you come back and I go, is that thing? You go, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> I just look at that. <laughs> you don't want to change anything. No, it's fine. It's fine, it's fine, it's fine. Uh, I actually work really closely with people because you know what? Sometimes they've actually got really good ideas themselves and they know exactly what they want. Other people are, but they haven't got a clue. But the women I work with have already got inspired by something that makes them change the business that they know that they have an idea for. And then whenever we start to do the unraveling part where we work one-to-one -one and we do the discovery process, that's whenever we start chatting, like what we're doing now, that's when it all starts coming out. That's whenever you start to discover the likes, the dislikes, what they're attracted to, what they're not attracted to. Do they want a text-based logo? Do they want an icon within that? Do they want something they can use as a submark? That's what it's all about. It's about working with somebody to get what they want. I think the downside for you is that you're actually inside my head, so you don't have to ask me. Well, I've had that say quite a few times. I think <laughs> the baker said exactly the same. You get in my head, I know what I want, even when I don't know what I want, but you seem to know that. I'm like, okay, I don't know if that makes sense, but fine. <laughs> How often do you get people coming to you and going, I am completely and totally and utterly in love with this brand, give me something like that? No. <gasps> do you get that often, though? I've had it a couple of times. Yeah. It's hard though, isn't it? Because that you know, we are inspired by the stuff we see. And I find that I learn much more from what I don't like yes. than what I do like. One hundred percent. I actually find that whenever I start working with people and they say they really like it, until you show them things and still you until you start putting out there, you actually find sometimes the likes, they turn out they don't like. So I've had somebody email me today and say, You've pulled all these things together for me, all these mood boards. Yeah. And I told you I wasn't really keen on purple, but I put purple in a mood board because I just thought, you know what, I'm going to see how this feels because I actually think this would work really well. I just come back today and said, Oh my gosh, I absolutely adore that. Who would have thought I would have gone for that one? And that's the one that's just picked. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. we often don't know what we like until it's put together, do we? Yeah, I actually think that the course of elimination happens more based on um, our dislikes than anything else. Yeah. yeah. But yeah, I would never, I, I, you, the whole, I love this, please do the same stuff is not my bag. No, no. I think it's all about us being ourselves, being unique, mm -hmm. hitting our mark, mm -hmm. and living in our truth. I actually work with a lot of women who, who don't think they're creative, but they're really creative. I think that comes across in a lot of the brands that I do. They're not, you know, they're not, um, they're not all the same type of businesses, but they all have the same inner creativity that sometimes they don't realise they've got. Yeah, I, love that. I think we're also brought up to think that creative is being able to draw or. Oh yeah, yeah, that's not true. No, no. You know, I'm. I can't draw. I, I struggle with my stick men. 
Um, but I am quite a creative person. Mm. So, you know, I think it, there's different variants on that. Mm -hmm. Would you be happy if we open up and ask anybody if they've got any questions for yeah, us? Yeah, let's do this. Come on then. If anybody would like to ask either of the new questions, both of us, get our feedback, um, talk about anything that you want, then jump on into the comments and we'll go through some questions. There's a lot of love for you in these comments. I can't actually see. That's really oh, bad, isn't it? Tell you a little bit about them. Um, Lisa says, my branding has to do more now, so I have had new Facebook banners designed and web banners by Vicky, working with my original branding and it's evolving. Claire says Vicky is a genius and also a beautiful soul to work with. Um, she not only designed my lovely branding, but she also taught me about consistency for memes, banners, and um, even my online scheduler. <laughs> I agree with fonts. I'm a chopper and a changer. Uh, Sarah Cornford says, I didn't think that I was creative at all, but working... Um, with Vicky made me feel super creative. Mm. I know that Sarah Cornforth is an amazing scrapbooker. It, Have you it, seen her scrapbooks? I know. Do, do, do you know what? It, it's just, just like when you see all her stuff and the way that she dresses, she's really creative and funky and edgy. And none of her old brand represented who she was. It was too stuffy. Far too stuffy. And that is not Sarah. No, she is amazingly creative. Um, mm. And I just doesn't know it. Well, she does now. She does um, know. So come on, ask any questions that you'd like, anything that you want to put to us, anything that you want to talk about. Absolutely anything at all. We are here. Da, da, da. How much time do you spend on your own branding? Are you like the builder that never finishes the house or are you good at doing your own stuff as well? kind of pull my stuff together really fast now but if, whenever I first started branding yourself is the most horrific task you've ever had in all your life I ask any designer you'd be as well outsourcing to somebody else because it took me months <laughs> well you got it right well I started off as the branding pixie because I'm like five foot right and thought that doesn't really work and then I started off as the brand and therapist, which I've actually shared my story about how that reads whenever you put it all together, and that's not good either. No. Um, and then I took forever to do stuff with regards to uh, actual logos. It takes forever whenever you brand yourself. But now I'm like, I know who I am. I'm out there now. I think it was just fear holding me back. I was like, right, I know who I am. This is what I'm going to do. Anne says, I need to book in with Vicky. I've got all sorts I need to do. Mm -hmm. I find my branding to be really wishy-washy. Lisa says, I need to create a landing page. How do I keep it on brand? Is it using colours, fonts and logos? It is. You've got a really good um, brand, Lisa, and we're going away to do some guidelines for Lisa, actually, just to help her out. Uh, but imagery as well. Imagery yeah. is a big thing for you, Lisa, because I can give you all the little icons and all the little you know, all the little toys and stuff and the trees, I can pull that out and strip it back and that's what you can inject into your landing page. That's easy peasy. But oh, you need to have the tools to do it and you're stuck just now because you don't have that imagery. Yeah, and she needs to really start to talk about that business and get it out there because I think it's, it's an inspired little business that will create a really great buzz yes. and a fab community feel around it mm -hmm. because there's, there's that something about it it is it's fab it's a love and it's gorgeous to pull together yeah you get loads of playing to do don't you <laughs> it's too much fun <laughs> and they call this work i do <laughs> anybody who uh, ask us anything else anything at all what would your top branding tip be mm, top branding tip Probably more to do with the fact whenever people talk about standing out and people, you know, I want to stand out from the crowd. I want to be different. And I've said this earlier on, but it's about contrast. Mm -hmm. It's about making your graphics stand out. It's about finding core colours that work really beautifully together and making them, you know, it's about the white and the black. You know, you can have a red and a blue. You can have an orange and a purple. It's sometimes about the complete opposite of each other that work really well together. And that is about standing out in people's news feeds. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, Lisa says I'm really struggling. I think a lot of it, you know, it's it's that combination between having the tools and having your brand ready and being able to step confidently into using it because you have the best contrasts in the world if you're hiding and not using them and not putting the oomph behind it and the passion behind it and and stepping in bravely mm -hmm. then I think it's that perfect mix isn't it? it's that blend absolutely yeah and this is the thing it'll all you will grow into everything that you do anyway you know we've talked about how things are very organic mm -hmm. you get to know what works what doesn't work what gets the most engagement you can base it on that actually whenever you see something that works what can you do more of the same thing then if this is working now but it might not work again in six months time things always change it's never set in stone so then try something else and see how that works and it's about you know swapping things up making things look different catching people's eye mm -hmm. so yeah so it can grow into something completely different every time yeah and i think that you know in the same way as we grow and we change and you know our our philosophies and the, the amount that we know and what's really important to us um mm -hmm. becomes more defined then we can look at how we reflect that within the look and feel of our business yeah absolutely what is lisa saying she's saying that she's really struggling that's okay lisa you and i can have a chat yeah lisa and i are working together at the moment anyway i've got things to do for her um and we're going to get a little bit of consistency and stuff on board for her so don't you worry lisa i will get you sorted uh, Anne says yeah i'm finding it hard because i want everything to look cohesive and yeah i think it consistency is the aim Mm -hmm. It doesn't happen overnight, does it? It doesn't, absolutely not. And the thing is as well, I think uh, with Anne, is that she's only just started to put into place a few of her ideas and then when she talks about it being cohesive, that's when it, the only reason that it doesn't probably feel like that just now is because you don't have the stuff to make it mm -hmm. cohesive. So if you don't have a lot of your templates and stuff in place, then it can feel like a little bit disjointed. Mm -hmm. And I think that's the problem at the moment with Anne, more than anything else. Yeah, I think that, you know, you bring together um, brand assets that, you know, I would refer to them as brand assets. And, mm -hmm. you know, you might end up with thousands and thousands and thousands of memes. Mm -hmm. But you don't get them on day one. No. You don't start off with thousands of different memes. You don't start off with, you know, having it all your, it's the whole ducks in a row thing. You know, you're not going to get your ducks to stand prettily in a row. No. It's that quote, you know, it's more like squirrels at a rave. <laughs> but, you know, it's a bit more like that. You know, it's a bit more about the fact that it comes together, but not, not like that. No, absolutely not. It takes a good six months to really get your brand established, to get your name out there, you know, to make things really sort of start to make waves for yourself in the online offline arena there is no secret to your branding other than consistency and having the sheer willpower to keep going for it yeah, absolutely absolutely would anybody like to ask us anything else before we um down tools and eat some lunch <laughs> any more for any more i have never heard squirrels at a rave before emma that's a new one for me oh well there we are <laughs> I've got my ducks in a row. I'm more of a squirrels at a rave kind of girl. Love that. <laughs> so, has anybody got anything else they'd like to ask? If you're watching the replay, pop your questions in. We will come back and um, answer them. I'll come in, or I'll direct uh, Vicky over if we are off air at that point. No uh, so, I just give it a couple of seconds and see. And see if there's anybody else. Where do you get your inspiration from when you're creating for other people all of the time? Uh, everywhere, really. I uh, read a lot. Mm -hmm. I get inspiration from magazines. Mm -hmm. um, I tend not to Google so much stuff because I quite like to take things sort of offline more. But my inspiration is probably more on my iPad. 
So what I do is I get my iPad out. This is my iPad. I've got an iPad Pro and I just get sketching. Mm -hmm. I literally just sketch. And I open this up and I go, right, what am I going to do today? And this is the logo that I'm creating. I can show you how it starts. <laughs> it's really sketchy. But I go onto my, on here. And then this is normally how a logo starts. So I just start sketching. And then I know who I'm going to work with and I know what I want to look like. Mm -hmm. And then once I start sketching it out, that's when the real inspiration happens. So I can take this anywhere with me. Yeah. And I often do. So if we're going for a walk to the park or whatever, I can. I know it's a bit big, but I do carry it about. And if AJ is playing, my little boy, then that's when I get the most inspired. You can see things happening. And sometimes walk in to school, school run stuff's brilliant. Um, and I just I just think that I get inspired sometimes just by things that are around or something that somebody says. Yeah, yeah. No, I, I, mine, obviously yours is visual, but mm -hmm. mine is, is more text-based. And I've got 200 and 200 and, let's have a look, 217 notes. Yeah. Of things as I've been out and about that have just been, some of them are one-liners, some of them are paragraphs. Mm -hmm. that I'm going to use that you know it's just been a word or a phrase or somebody said something or I, I've seen something or a thought pro you know I, I call them uh, thought threads you know yeah. you start with one little it's like pulling and pulling yeah. and it all starts to unravel and then you're like whoa that was a brilliant idea yeah that's how it all starts though that's the that's the best that's the best way to begin yeah totally right well, I think everybody is fine and dandy. I hope you enjoyed our chat today. Thank you for joining us. And uh, thank you, Mickey, for being here with me. Thank you for having me, lovely. My absolute pleasure. And bye to everyone. Bye. bye.